We are building the plane while we are flying it. That's how they described the treatment at their gender clinic. All right, y'all. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you're tuning in. I'm grateful to have you here. And we got Dr. Miriam Grossman in the building today. And I haven't seen this clip yet, but it's gained well over a million views in just a few short weeks. So I'm sure it's going to be a doozy. I believe what she does is expose how sick and twisted this entire gender affirming chaos is. And even though anybody with a connected brain stem and just a little common sense should realize just how nuts and cattywampus this whole world that we're living in is and thinking that you could change from a man to a woman and vice versa it's just wild but i'll save my thoughts to the end let's get it popping thank you for your testimony the chair now recognizes dr grossman for five minutes for your opening statement thank you for the opportunity to address you my name is miriam grossman i am a board certified child adolescent and adult psychiatrist author and senior fellow at do no harm i have been taking care of patients for 45 years. I'm going to use my time to respond to Dr. McNamara. All the experience. First, I'm struck by her use of the phrase sex assigned at birth. Sex is not assigned at birth. Sex is established at conception and it's recognized at birth, if not earlier. Mm. Dr. McNamara claims that her views are science-based but to claim that sex is assigned at birth is without any scientific basis whatsoever. Its language misleads people, especially children, into thinking that male and female are arbitrary designations and can change. That is simply not true. Dr. McNamara claims that social and medical interventions are the only evidence-based treatment and that scientific evidence shows it is life-saving. Without it, she's warning us, kids will commit suicide. Well, a growing number of countries have effectively banned the care to which she's referring. And thank God, there's been no wave of suicides or other mental health catastrophes. Three years ago, Finland placed strict limitations on medical interventions for minors. Sweden did the same thing after a 14-year-old girl was found to have osteoporosis and spinal fractures from puberty blockers. An investigation concluded, quote, the risks of anti-puberty uh, and hormone treatment for those under 18 currently outweigh the possible benefits. The UK conducted a review and called the evidence very low. They've also placed severe restrictions on the care that Dr. McNamara calls life-saving. Norway also analyzed the data and has made similar changes in policy. The National Academy of Medicine in France warned, quote, great medical caution must be taken in children and adolescents given the vulnerability of this population and the many undesirable, even serious complications the therapies cause. Doctors in New Zealand and Australia have published similar statements. Is Dr. McNamara suggesting that all these countries are rejecting evidence-based treatment and placing their kids at risk of suicide? Regarding that point of view, Finland's gender expert, Dr. Rita Kaltiela said, quote, it's purposeful disinformation, the spreading of which is irresponsible. All seven countries, and Florida too, of course, concluded that kids don't need their development interrupted, the girls don't need their periods stopped and their voices lowered, and the boys don't need to grow breasts. What they need is psychotherapy. I have other objections to Dr. McNamara's testimony. She insists that her position, only hers, represents standard medical care. What she doesn't want you to know is that there is no standard. There's a debate. There's a fierce debate. And on the side opposite her stand such prominent figures as Stephen Levine, Kenneth Zucker, Paul McHugh, and James Cantor, among others. These doctors are giants in the field. They have been treating transgender patients and gathering data and publishing papers about them. And I mean no disrespect here but since before Dr. McNamara was born. 
The point is that those veteran clinicians and others who have wisdom and experience are ignored because they disagree with the current narrative. They're against medical interventions for the same reason those seven countries are. There is no evidence of long-term benefit, but there is evidence of harm. I'll end by quoting Jamie Reed, the courageous whistleblower from the Children's Gender Clinic in St. Louis. I believe that that hospital receives the medical education funding that we're discussing today. She said that doctors at that clinic said, we are building the plane while we are flying it. We are building the plane while we are flying it. That's how they described the treatment at their gender clinic. Our precious tax dollars should not support such a perilous experiment. Mm. Thank you. Amen. I couldn't agree more, Dr. Grossman. Uh, that's gooder than chicken right there, y'all, for real. I mean, it sounds to me like Dr. McNamara needs to have her her head. I, I didn't know if it was a man or a woman. They might not even know what they are. They need to have that license revoked, and they need to take note of what all these countries are doing. The fact that there's no benefits of gender-affirming care and going through with these mutilating, wicked procedures if other people have that data, that those analytics that you could break down since, you know, doctors and science are supposed to be about the facts, the facts are right there presented in front of you that they have long term detriments and they have no benefits. So why are you going against that? Why are you propagandizing and spreading this false narrative? Why are you building the plane as you fly it and treating our kids like guinea pigs? For, like, it, it makes no sense. It's disgusting. This Dr. McNamara and anybody, parents included, anybody that goes along with this, this ideology of, of gender affirming and this narrative, they need to be penalized. They need to be punished to the furthest extent of the law if they don't turn from this and, and just face reality. Own up to it. Live in the present and realize that God got this thing right the first time. The Almighty assigned the genders at conception and at birth all together. He knitted you together in your mother's womb. And I I know a lot of these people are godless, but that doesn't change what the truth is. The truth is and always will be. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and you will always be a man or a woman exactly how you came out. No matter how you feel about it, no matter how triggered you want to get about it, confused in your feelings, you need to get some help if you think you're something else than what you see reflecting back at you in the mirror. That's what it comes down to, and God bless this woman right here. Lord, seriously, I mean, protect this amazing woman, and what we just witnessed was just dish out facts for days. I love just hearing this because it's so refreshing to listen to a well-spoken and passionate voice of sanity just in a world that is going completely mad and, you know, leaned into sinful behavior instead of repenting of it. it, it things are all the way wrong. People are perpetuating uh, evil is good and good is evil and things are all the way twisted. North is south and she could have just left it as at, right then, mic drop moment for the ages. Just left it at sex isn't assigned at birth. Sex is established at conception. We literally could have packed up shop right then. God would have been pleased, but thankfully she had even more ammo in the mag and she just decided to go full send with the truth. Just take a step back with me for a minute because I know I get passionate and real fired up about this. When it comes to children, I'm not playing games and neither should y'all, but think about it from this lens. If children aren't legally allowed to smoke, drink, gamble, and drive until they're 16 and up, then why in the heck would anyone let a minor that has zero intellectual or physical maturity make an irreversible life-changing decision to take puberty blockers or swap out parts or any of this kind of evil mutilation? Why would you let them execute that, that, that option. That shouldn't even be a choice, a decision, anything up for debate. It just makes no sense that this wicked deceit is even going on. And it has to stop. People need to stop affirming and pushing this onto innocent kids. You need to get them some help. And if, if you're delusional, if you think this is okay, then you need some help. It's not a parent, a school principal, a social worker, a teacher, or a child's choice to determine what gender they are. You need to leave them babies alone and let these kids just be kids. If you see that they're lost and stranded, you need to be that sound judgment in their life. Do your jobs for land sakes. Like wake up and start guiding them with wisdom and love and a little discipline when needed. When you see them a little confused, straying out of line, real love corrects. Real love speaks the truth and says, hey, hey, come back over here. No, 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 no. That, that's not the way. Jesus is the way. This is the way you're supposed to be acting. This is righteous behavior. Give them a little space. 
spank and do whatever you got to do, but don't go along with it. Don't allow them to think that, you know, this confusion, this state of mind, this feeling that, you know, feelings are fleeting. They come and go, especially when you're in your teenage years. Like think back to when you were a kid, boy or girl, at some point, all of our hormones were going wild all over the place. It's called puberty. It, it, everybody goes through it. And there's all sorts of new, exciting or depressing feelings. There's anxieties, confusions, attractions. Some stages are more difficult for some than others. But as a boy, you start thinking girls are attractive and hopefully they reciprocate and feel the same at some point. And they got a lot going through their head mentally, trying to learn at school, maybe playing sports, uh, looking at different changes in the mirror. M girls getting those monthly menstrual cycles that only naturally born women get and all sorts of stuff. Boys getting hair in spots that they never thought that they would have hair. It's just a lot getting thrown at them. And at some point it eventually levels out and you, you know, you hopefully become a responsible responsible, respectful adult. But when people start interfering with that natural process of, of growing up, things are bound to go down a dark and, and toxic slope that only makes kids and society suffer in the long run. And any, any parent that continues to harm their children, like I said, they need to be prosecuted to the furthest extent of the law as criminals, because that's what they are. They are engaging in criminal activity in degrading their child and allowing their child to transform into something that they'll never be. And down the line, that child is probably going to want to harm themselves or other people. And it, it, it's just all jacked up and we can't keep allowing this. And since this is a Christian channel, I got to give that point of view and we got to remind these people and emphasize what Jesus said in Matthew 18 verse six, that whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a great millstone fastened around his neck and to be drowned in the depth of the sea. That would be a better alternative than to what you have to look forward to if you continue to lead these little children astray and into the depths of darkness and destruction and allow them to wage that sin that leads to death. And if that child doesn't have faith in Christ, that falls back on the parent as well because they didn't raise them with a biblical foundation and teach them what it means to live righteously. But there's still no excuse because at some point, I understand I didn't grow up in a, in a household that was with godly values, any of that. My mom did the best she knew how, alcoholic stepfather. That's what I grew up with, a father that was basically just a donor. My mom did the best that she could with what she knew. She didn't grow up in a godly home. Her parents were separated as well. So I can't hold her accountable forever because at some point, God, the rubber meets the road. God is going to play certain people, situations, circumstances in your field of view that you get to choose. God gives us all free will. He always provides a way out where you can choose the wide path that leads to destruction aka hell you can continue to practice in those lawless behaviors or you can go down the narrow path that leads to real life at some point all of the sin that you've committed, all the poor decisions and wrongdoings that you've done, there's a path there for you and it can be overcome. You can be healed and you can look to Jesus Christ. You can reach repentance. That goes for, for any, if there are biological, physiological factors involved, there's hope for everyone. That could be bad parents, trans, homosexual, sexually immoral people, anyone who's made a bad habit of making poor, sinful decisions. It can be overcome right now because God's given us forgiveness. It's available in Jesus Christ. That's made real clear in 1 Corinthians 6 verse 11. And such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, and you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the spirit of our God. So if you're out in the world and you know how to live, you need to be an example. You need to be salt and light of the earth, seasoning your speech with salt, helping these kids, helping these lost souls, helping them reach repentance and find real peace of mind. Because all of these things, leaning into lust, leaning into confusion and temptation and everything that amounts to sin and lawlessness, it's never going to fulfill. Only Jesus Christ can do that. So the solution to all our problems in this world, whether it be this gender ideology, uh, pornography, lust, pervasion of God's word, all of this craziness that is demonic behavior and, you know, leaning into that reprobate mind that God might just give you over to if, if you don't come correct and if you don't eventually make the right decision, Remember, Jesus Christ came as the innocent one, the good shepherd, looking out for his sheep. He came to take on all the sins, all the shame, guilt, evil, darkness, everything. He bore that on the cross as the innocent one for the guilty, for us, fallen human nature, going back to the beginning of time with Adam and Eve in that Garden of Eden. He died on the cross for us and then was resurrected, beat death and gave us a way out. So when we reach repentance and we put our complete faith in him as the Lord and Savior, 
then we have eternal salvation and everlasting life. So you don't need to be worried about being a little boy or a little girl or something that you're not. You can focus on the kingdom because that's what we're striving for. All of this temporary passing by the wayside, no matter what materialistic things you acquire, men, women, lust, pervasions, whatever you de deem is important. It's all passing away, collecting moth, rust, and vermin. Can't strap a U-Haul to a hearse. Can't take any of it with you. I've said it time and time again. Your eyes need to be focused on right now what you can control in the present, in reality, so you can get to the kingdom, so you can get to heaven and lead as many people as you can there with you. That's the goal. That's what I'm striving to do, and that's why I always will use my platform to spread the good news. I pray that y'all do the same, and I pray for all of these people that we break down in videos that they wake up. If they're lost... I love them, but Lord, they need some help. But what do y'all think about this? What do you think about Dr. Grossman, Dr. McNamara spreading this false narrative propaganda nonsense, even though they know better, but they're still leaning into these experiments and building the plane as they fly it. How messed up is that? I would love to hear your thoughts down below. What'd you think about my rant afterwards? Anything you want to let me know, let me know down in the comments section. Let's keep this conversation rolling. Don't forget to like this video by smashing the thumbs up button down below. Subscribe if you're not already. Ring the notification bell so you get notified anytime I post a video just in case YouTube forgets to let you know. I appreciate you. I love y'all for doing so. If you want to take it a step further, you like what we're doing over here, you want to show a little extra love and support, by no means do you have to, but you can get awesome designs like this Godfidence, knowing I can't, but he can. These designs are made over my wife's Etsy store by her, customized in-house, all of that, insulated tumblers, petite, teat, small sizes to big, big and hefty for the 5X folks out there, all different sizes and colors. Like I said, we don't discriminate. We appreciate y'all. It goes a very long way and allowing me to continue to do what I do. All my other links are down below in the description section. Shout out to the Patreon, Buy Me A Coffee fam. Anybody who's ever joined the Gibson family on YouTube by hitting that little join button and becoming a member, I'm so grateful for y'all. I can't thank you enough and put into words and context just how appreciative I am for you guys showing up every single video and allowing my freckle face to rant at you. I just love y'all so much and I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this thing up. I'll be praying for you. Until next time, Godspeed, I'm gone.